Welcome back. You're watching To The Point. If there's one man whose opinion is valued by politicians, jurists, and laymen alike, it's Fali Nariman. By common acclaim, he's possibly India's greatest constitutional lawyer. So how does he view the new National Judicial Appointments Commission that the government is setting up to replace the collegiate system of appointment of judges? Joining me now from Bombay for an exclusive interview is Fali Nariman himself. Mr. Nariman, let's start with the membership of the proposed National Judicial Appointments Commission. It will comprise three judges, including the Chief Justice of India, the Law Minister, and two eminent persons. This means that out of a total of six, the judges will only be 50% and not a preponderance. Are you happy with that? No, no, not at all. In fact, at a meeting that the law minister was pleased to call and invited some of us, a large number of advocates, on the 28th of July, the consensus of a large number of advocates was that whatever the composition of the commission, there must never be an outvoting of the judges on the commission. And that, incidentally, Karan, is the view of the Venkatchalaya Commission, which was appointed by the BJP government in its uh, earlier garb in 1998 or the year 2000. It gave its report in 2002. Okay. And this is precisely what it said. So what you're saying is that out of these six people, at least four should have been judges. Three is one too few. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And that, that, that was the view even of the, those people who were present at this meeting, people of the eminence of uh, Chief Justice Kare, Chief okay. Justice uh, Ahmadi. They were sitting to the right and left of the law minister. And that's why I'm a little surprised. I think even the law minister has been taken by surprise by this very bill of his. Because uh, he never projected this. And so it, I expected that uh, at least uh, if this was going to be a bill which, came, which was to be projected in a couple of weeks' time from the meeting, I think uh, it would have behoved everybody if uh, we had got a copy of it uh, in advance so that we could have at least commented it, on it. So the first imperfection in this bill is that judges are only 50% not a preponderance. Have I understood that correctly? That's the first imperfection in your eyes. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, because that, that goes against the very grain, and the grain of the Constitution is the independence of the judiciary. Okay. And that, that's a very basic, uh, uh, important uh, point uh, about the, our Constitution. Now, this Commission will appoint judges both for the Supreme Court as well as all the different High Courts. When it considers candidates for a High Court, the Commission will consult the concerned High Court Chief Justice who in turn will consult two other judges. In your eyes, is that sufficient, or do you think the concerned High Court Chief Justice should have been a formal member of the Commission with a vote? There are two things. He, he should have been a formal member. And secondly, I don't think why we should re restrict this to two senior most people. In fact, perhaps the junior most judges of the High Courts or the Supreme Court are better able to judge as to who or who has, is performing well, uh, either at the bar in the, in the one instance or on the bench in the other. And I have therefore of the opinion that if you uh, have this differentiation amongst uh, two or three senior judges and the rest so-called junior judges, I think it's an invidious distinction and that I wish had, it had been abolished. Okay. So once again, you're pointing at a second imperfection. When High Court judges are being selected, the concerned Chief Justice of the High Court should be a formal member of the Commission with a vote. And secondly, the consultation shouldn't be restricted to just senior judges. It should include junior judges. Have I understood that correctly, Mr. Nariman? Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The entire body of judges. Now, let's come to the eminent persons who will be appointed by the Commission. That is going to happen through a committee comprising the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, and the Chief Justice of India. Now, I know that when you met the Law Minister on yeah. the 28th of July, you had suggested that the eminent persons on the Commission should in fact be nominated by the President after consulting just the Chief Justice of India. That advice has been ignored by the government. Yes, yes. 
instead of your no. advice being followed, we and have no, this three-member uh, no. body. Are you happy with yes. this three-member body? But, no, no, but it wasn't just my advice. It was, it was not my original idea. This was the recommendation of the Venkatchalaya Commission itself. I don't know why they have, they have departed from it. And if they had departed from it, I think it should have been so stated in the statement of objects and reasons so that members of parliament would know that there has been a departure and would be therefore entitled to ask the law minister why this departure. And he may well have given a good reason or not have given a good reason. Beyond the point that in fact the law minister has departed from what the Venkata Chalaya Commission had laid down and advised almost 14, 15 years ago, how much of a lapse is it that the eminent persons will be appointed not directly on the advice of the Chief Justice, but by a committee comprising the Chief Justice, the Prime Minister and the leader of an opposition? How much of a lapse is that? No, no, again that's wrong. The, the, as I said, a very, an expert committee which was set up to review the entire constitution uh, and uh, Justice Venkatchala presided, a host of eminent members were there and they all recommended that no, the eminent persons, since they are not, can't, can't be defined, it's very difficult to define them, my eminent person may not be yours. It has to be by some super eminent people, namely the President of India in consultation with the Chief Justice. And that, w that would perhaps have uh, ironed out a lot of creases. And okay. I don't mind that even if the, the proviso which has been now added, namely that there should be amongst uh, the eminent persons, one of them should be from amongst the minorities, the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, that's perfectly all right, if that's a matter of policy. But, 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 and that's a very big but, it, the, the person who chooses, the person who recommends, must be of the eminence, of the super eminence of the president, as well as the chief justice who is very high in All the right. protocol. In fact, Mr. Nariman, what you had suggested and what the Venkata Chalai Committee wanted hasn't happened. We have, as I mentioned a moment ago, got a committee comprising three people to choose the eminent persons. Now, the bill doesn't specify how this committee of three will choose the two eminent persons. Would you be happy if they are chosen not unanimously, but by a majority decision? Would that be okay with you? No, no, not at all. Has, I mean, there, there should be no, there should be no cavil, there should be no controversy about who is or who is not an eminent person in the eyes of such important personages. It must be an obvious choice. <laughs> Which means it <laughs> has to be unanimous. I, 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 don't, I don't think we should have admit. All right. It has to be unanimous. It has and, to be and unanimous. This is one of the one of the cases where you, you can expect it to be unanimous as well. You wouldn't expect a difference of opinion. Amongst Mr. very such okay. high personages. Mr. Nariman, I now want to come to the Constitution Amendment Bill, which makes the National Judicial Appointments Commission a part of the Constitution. That bill says, and I'm going to quote, no act or proceedings of the National Judicial Appointments Commission shall be questioned or be invalidated merely on the grounds of the existence of any vacancy in the Constitution of the Commission. Well, that clearly means that if one of the three judges who are meant to be members of the commission are not present and not participating, you can still go ahead and appoint judges. Is that acceptable to you, that you can, in fact, as a result of this, reduce the tally of judges from three to two? You see, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, perhaps uh, something I, I'm sure, because I'm sure the law minister didn't intend all this. Um, because when he spoke to us on the 27th, he never said all this. We, we never knew that this was going to be the position. And uh, if it was going to be the position, uh, I, I would have expected that just as he was kind enough to uh, inform us about uh, what he was going to do, he would, should have informed us about this bill as well. What's the tearing hurry? Why, why should it be introduced here and now? On the contrary, all of us left the meeting we're under the distinct impression that this was not going to come up in the, in the current session. You know, I get the impression from what you're saying that either the law minister himself is not aware of what his bill contains, which would be very surprising, but it's a possibility as you raise, or he withheld things from you 
when he met you on the 28th of July and as a result misled you into believing that the bill would be different to what it turns out to be? No, no, I, I don't think the law minister misled us. I don't think he ever intended to. I know him too well. I, he's not a person who misleads people. But, but I, I personally think there has been some, some super, super important event that has occurred which has left us all flummoxed. We just don't know what has happened. But some, some new development within the party itself of which none of us are aware. In it other could words... only be there. Because I'm sure... Yeah. In other well, words, I'm what sure that if, if there was going to be a bill, a bill, a bill within 10 days of our meeting and that bill was already with him, I'm sure he would have circulated it. I have just no doubt about it. All right. What you're suggesting is that someone more important than the law minister intervened and twisted and tweaked the bill to give these outcomes that I'm now bringing to your notice. No. Let's... No, 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 I'm making no such suggestion. What, what I'm suggest... What I'm... That's your suggestion. My suggestion is really that this, this bill was not intended to be brought at this time. Oh, in and other so words... so soon after this consultation that took place. In other words, it's a half-baked bill, it's not properly uh, thought through. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It, it should have been. Okay. And in fact, they should have followed the recommendations of the commission they themselves had appointed. All right. Let's move beyond the membership of the National Judicial Appointments Commission and talk a little about the way it will function and the way it will choose judges. The bill says that the commission cannot recommend a name if any two members don't agree with the recommendation. In other words, those two dissenting members have an effective veto. Are you happy with that or does that cause you concern? No, but let me tell you something. There, you see, there was some discussion about whether there should be a preponderance of the judicial element in the commission. And all of us were of the view that there should, as I already said. But it was pointed out to us that suppose in a given case, and he said there were some, some instances like that, a palpably uh, no, no, uh, uh, unimportant person or a, a palpably person who should not be appointed was proposed and that person was to be appointed what, what, would, what would be the result? Under the judgment today the government has to appoint him so should there not be a resolution or solution on that? Now that solution to my mind is this that if there is a serious objection in writing to a particular person chosen by a majority of the commission, then the proper thing to do is that the president would decide this question again in consultation with the Chief Justice of India. You cannot omit the Chief Justice of India. But can I interrupt and put this to you then? Are you happy with the fact that two dissenting members can stop a recommendation happening. In other words, you can only recommend if it's unanimous or if it's 5-1, but 4-2 would be sufficient to stop a recommendation, which means that those two dissenters have an effective veto. Are you happy with that? No, no, I don't like this veto at all. No, no, not at all. This was not the Judicial Commission that we all thought would, would correctly replace the existing system. We are, now, we are now getting back into a uh, lot of problems in, within the existing system. There were a lot of problems. We can't have more problems created with this new system. Let me put something to you. Many people believe that this two-man veto actually means that people can gang up against what the three judges on the commission want. It's quite possible that the chief justice and the two judges on the commission want person A to be made a Supreme Court judge. All it takes is two non-judicial members to say no, and the judges will be thwarted. Is that a concern for you? Oh, no, I, I, I'm, yes, a, a great concern, amongst the many other concerns. Uh, in fact, I, 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 I would not like this bill at all passed. It doesn't express the view of most of the members of the bar, in my view, uh, who had all opposed the collegium system because it was not transparent. And now we are being 
we are being almost threatened with a, with a new provision, which perhaps... If I understand you correctly, what you've just said, and I'm reiterating it for the audience, you would not like this bill passed. Can you repeat that? Because it's so important, Mr. Nariman. Yes, of course. I, I, I also, I, I am not responsible for passing it or not passing it, since I have no authority. Oh, it's, we seem to have lost I... Mr. Nariman at that point. We're going to take a quick break. Hopefully, within 30 seconds, he'll be back, and we will continue with this very important interview. Give us 30 seconds to patch up that line to Bombay. Back to the point and our exclusive interview with one of India's greatest constitutional lawyers, Fali Nariman. My apologies for the fact that at that very critical moment, our video connection to Bombay and Mr. Nariman broke. So, Mr. Nariman, I'm going to begin by getting you to repeat what you were saying when that line broke. You said that you wish that this bill in its present form is not passed by Parliament. Can you repeat that, please? No, oh, absolutely. I wish that the bill is certainly not passed by Parliament. But looking, uh, looking to the fact that we nearly broke off, I, I'm, uh, I'm sure there are many other people who wish that the bill is passed. But that may be so, but I want to stick to your views because they're very important to me tonight. Now, the aim of the National Judicial Commission was to move away from the collegium system, which people said gave judges primacy, and to create a more balanced way of choosing yeah. judges, giving a bigger role to the executive. But do you fear that instead of a more balanced role, we may be veering towards a system where the executive has primacy for two reasons. A, because the judges don't have preponderance, and B, because this veto system that we've talked about actually could mean that what the judges want is thwarted. So do you fear we've ended up with a system that gives the executive uh -huh. primacy? Yeah, and, and a third reason, that the eminent persons are chosen in the political sphere. And, and not by the president uh, with the uh, aid and advice of the Chief Justice of India alone. So we've now ended up with a system which gives the executive primacy and diminishes the role of the judiciary in, in choosing judges. Yeah, that's a matter of great moment, actually. And I'm very sorry that this should have been pushed through in this fashion, or at least introduced in this fashion. I sincerely hope it's not pushed through in this fashion. Well, we're very close to it being, in fact, passed. It was passed by the Lok Sabha, I believe, unanimously early today. The government is hoping it could be passed by the Rajya Sabha tonight. If not tonight, it could happen tomorrow. So there's a real danger yeah. that by this time tomorrow, this but bill will may be I say one thing? Yeah. Yeah, but there's one, one good thing at least, uh, the silver lining is, thank God for the basic structure doctrine. Well, that's what I want to pick up on and as my last question. And you know what that is, Karan. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to make it more explicit. Right. When you say, thank God for the basic structure doctrine, yeah. are you saying that there's a real possibility that the Supreme Court could strike down the National Judicial Appointments Commission for the very problematic reasons we've been discussing? Yeah, exactly. Because, because the independence of the judiciary is now a cornerstone of the Constitution. It is a basic feature of the Constitution. And anything that is done which damages it is, uh, is uh, anathema. And the people who decide are the judges of the Supreme Court. Please remember that. So what you're saying to me, and this is my last question, that if this bill is passed in its present form and there's every likelihood that it will be passed, there's also then a real possibility the Supreme Court will strike it down. Can you confirm that? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and uh, many lawyers, including myself, will, will uh, move in that direction. You will move in that direction yourself personally? Yes, yes, why not? Mr. Nariman, thank you very much indeed. My apologies for the fact that we broke that line in between. But thank you for staying with us and thank you for the very important things you said. You just heard Fadi Nariman, one of India's 
greatest constitutional lawyer saying that the National Judicial Appointments Commission bill is riddled with imperfections. It undermines what he considers critical to our constitution, which is the independence of the judiciary. He believes that the Supreme Court could well strike it down as ultra-virus, and he will himself move the Supreme Court to do so if this bill is passed, as everyone believes it will be tomorrow. I'm afraid we've run well over time. My thanks to you for watching, and I'm going to hand over now live to my colleague, Rahul Kambal, with an apology for having trespassed all over his time.